One look at the world and you can see the influence of evil. Is it any wonder? We have driven Yahweh God out of everything and basically told him on no uncertain terms that he is no longer welcome even by the very president we have elected into office. Abortions have become the norm and the kids we have brought into this world are completely godless for the most part. The family unit is non-existent and many kids don't even know who dad is. They are latchkey on their own with no role models to learn from save for those in Hollywood. It's an, if it feels good, do it, or do as thou wilt as the whole of the law. Generation filled with lawlessness. There are no locks on the gates to keep the demons out anymore, and Yahweh is stepping further and further away as he gets shunned and insulted. Demons are legalistic. They need a right to be wherever they are. That does not necessarily mean you have to say, come on in, with your lips because your actions can do the same. In fact, it's much more difficult to avoid them getting into your life than most people even imagine or care to know or for that matter, believe. And it does not matter if you believe or not because that does not change what is. They prefer you do not believe because that makes their job super easy. And there are legions of demons who are sitting in very cushy jobs right now with no one to recognize them or fight. The need for deliverance, exorcism to Catholics, is overwhelming right now. Even the Catholic Church has had to train more exorcists due to the increased need. Though the Catholic Church is considered Christian, and while I believe there are many wonderful and sincere people in it, I still have to add that the hierarchy is evil and therefore cannot truly be effective, but for only a short duration in its exorcism rituals. Then I might also add that when the demons return, they will be worse than the ones there previously. But I digress. I would venture to say that every human being, except for a select few, who are repentant and well versed in deliverance, is harboring several at the very least and legions of demons at the worst. But this does not have to be the case and in true truth would not be the case if the churches were doing their jobs in feeding the sheep. But they are exact, extremely lacking in that department. So the sheep are left to fend for themselves, or so it would seem, to the outside world. But the fact is that Yahweh and Yahushua, Jesus, never leave the flock unattended, ever. <clears throat> we have their word, the Bible, and best of all, the Holy Spirit, to help and teach us what we need to know to defend ourselves. But here is the biggest factor that stops us, laziness. Most Christians are too lazy to seek out the absolute truth. They want to go to church one day a week, and usually that is a Sunday, hear the sermon, do a little fellowshipping, and be on their way. Well, that used to work for the community. We would always hear what a God-fearing man or woman so-and-so was because they went to church every week, but that never worked for Yahweh. So what's wrong with that? First, if you were really reading your Bible and researching what it was saying, then you would already know that Sunday is not the Sabbath. Saturday is. Sunday is a pagan day of sun worship, not for Christians who really want to do what Yahweh asks. Even the Catholic Church knows this and makes a point of lashing out at the hypocritical evangelical church in the Catholic Catechism for following Sunday worship while claiming the Bible as the authority. So why do they do it? Because they claim the Pope as the infallible representation of Christ on earth and the Pope says to worship on Sunday. Still want to go to church on Sunday? Second, going to church would be great if it were done on Saturday and the preacher would actually feed the flock some meat and not some fairy tale of a god that just sits on a big fluffy white cloud surrounded by angels playing harps and loving all his creation no matter what they do. This country is under judgment right now and just like Egypt in Exodus, Yahweh is giving us chances to repent and get things right. When we ignore the judgment, each time it gets a little worse. We need preachers who are willing to risk telling people the truth. 
that abortion is wrong. It is murder, and they will be judged as murderers unless they repent and go in another direction. That homosexuality is an abomination unto Yahweh, who made us to create life in his way, by his design, and not to live in carnal sin as a slave to the flesh. That there is only one true God, and that thinking that all paths lead to him is a severe error, and that can be proven in scripture, and that each of these sins brings a host of demons attached to them that will abide with and in them ru ruining their lives and their chances of salvation. The fear of God needs to be up upon pastors stronger than the fear of losing the crowd, and therefore their weekly basket of money. What you need to know about demons. Demons seem to fall into one of two groups. Either they are high-ranking, Nephilim, the original fallen angels that rank just under Satan himself, and that came down that came down from uh, uh, Mount Hermon and mated with the daughters of men in Genesis 6, 2, and 4. Or they are the offspring of the Nephilim, called the Gibberim, who Yah Yahweh commanded all killed off in the flesh, yet being part angelic and therefore immortal, became the evil spirits that we always hear about. This can be seen in the book of Enoch, which I highly recommend that you read. The Gibberim are lower ranking, but actually more evil than the higher ranking demons because in the mixture of the DNAs it caused them to become increasingly more deranged as time went on. Their bloodlust while in the flesh became so intense that they quit killing their prey when eating and just tore them to bits, devouring them alive. Their insatiable hunger drove both small and large animals to the brink of extinction and at that point they turned to human flesh devouring us in the same manner. Oh yes, did I mention they were giants? There, these are the giants that are mentioned in Genesis 6, 4. So that is where they come from. And as you might be able to glean thus far, the Nephilim were part of the group of angels that Satan corrupted. They sided with him and left their estate. And because of this, they are eternally doomed. See Enoch. So they have been around since the beginning, since way before us. They have been watching us for thousands of years. They know our nature better than we do. They know our weaknesses better too. And they use and they use that information very well <coughs> because they are immortal and move between dimensions and have what to us are supernatural powers. They are able to deceive us very easily. Even though they are immortal, like us, they must have nourishment. The angels that still serve Yahweh eat manna, because that is also told to us in the Bible. Psalm 78, 24 to 25. But the fallen ones and the evil spirits no longer thrive on what is pure and good. The ultimate food for them is blood. But if they can, cannot get the energy needed from blood, letting then they can make do with the energy of lower emotions the bible tells us to fear not 144 times there are 144,000 elect and there are no accidents fear is the strongest of the emotions that feed them best but they all will also partake of anger hatred jealousy envy gossip and backbiting murderous rage depression, suicidal thoughts, addictions, lust, fornication, unholy desires, aggression, the list goes on and on. All negative and low vibration thoughts and actions are demon food. So remember that every time you get angry or anything else negative, you are feeding demons and making them grow stronger in your life and in the lives of those around you. Demons will jump <coughs> into or onto anyone else that exhibits any of these emotions around you as well. You see, these emotions, thoughts, and actions are all gateways, and every time you partake of these, you open the gates a bit wider and invite in more demons to the party. Demons can experience things through you when they are attached to you or possess you. They can experience your high from drugs, your loopiness from alcohol, the cigarette you're smoking, the sex you're having, and so on. So possessing you or attaching to you brings multiple benefits for them while their main objective is being accomplished. The separation of you from Yahweh, Yahushua, and your eternal damnation in hell with them. Now it's not that they like your company so much 
that they want to spend eternity with you. No. Your eternal damnation to hell breaks the heart of Yahweh because he wishes no man to perish. He has sent his written word, his instruction manual to guide us safely away from these pitfalls. He has sent his only son to suffer and die to restore us to righteousness and salvation. When we say no to all that he has offered us, he will give you your freedom to choose your path, even though it hurts him terribly to do so, even though he knows what you face because he has warned you repeatedly because he has sent his prophets to warn you. He has given example after example to what will occur, and you have either ignored his warning, not bothered to even look into his word, or outright deny it all. That is the main purpose to this all for the demons. They are out to destroy Yahweh, and they are using us as a tool to do it. End of part one.